Hello everybody and welcome back to the second of the three planned fission reactor update videos. Um, I have to be a little bit quieter now because it is about three in the morning and people are asleep, including the dog next to me who is uh, looking very tired and uh, probably wondering why I'm still up recording YouTube videos. Today we're going to be looking at the irradiator, pretty crucial component of the progression through the fuels and the fission sources. Um, there are three recipes in here. Now each one of them has a flux requirement. So you can see this is actually 160 uh, kilo neutron. It's like a neutron, it's like a flux unit. So Kn, so kilo neut neutrons, let's say. Uh, this is 2,720 kilo neutrons. This is 1,920 kilo neutrons. Uh, the number of neutrons per tick is given by the flux factors on the moderators. So for example, heavy water, 36. And per tick, when the thing's running, the amount that the irradiator is getting is just equal to the moderator lines it's connected to and over time the recipe will process. Uh, there are three, the three recipes are thorium to protactinium enriched thorium dust which is then decay hastened to TBU or alternatively you can put it back through the fission radiator to get protactinium 233 dust which is then decay hastened to uranium 233 or you can do bismuth to polonium and polonium makes better neutron sources. You can see this has an efficiency multiplier of 95% while the radium beryllium neutron sources only have an efficiency of, no, of 90%. So it's just a better neutron source uh, and that means that your reactors will just be more efficient overall. Now Hellrageous Planner doesn't have the irradiators yet um, so I'll have to explain a little bit more carefully what I'm doing um, because I won't be able to upload the design. I've sort of got a pseudo design um, which sort of I've had to do a little bit of uh, the maths of like, including the irradiators um, inside the design uh, but hopefully you'll be able to follow, I'll explain what's happening. So the rule with the radiators are, is that they sit at the end of moderator lines. So let's just get one out quickly. Um, let's just put a fission cell and some moderators and a radiator. So if we have something like this inside our reactor, um, this is like a standard moderator line. So this is 72 flux. This means that if this cell is active, then this irradiator will be getting 72 flux per tick. And remember that those recipes need like, you know, hundreds or thousands. So the recipe will take however long it does. And this cell also is connected to a functional moderator line. So this uh, will get an additional heat multiplier of one. It will get an incremented heat multiplier. So we've got to take that into account when we're building this. Um, and that's why you've got to be a little bit careful if you're trying to build sort of pseudo irradiator designs in the planner for now. So my cells are going to go here. The fuel I'm going to be using is a MOX239, uh, which is a criticality factor of 94 and a base heat gen of 132. So my fuel cells go here. Uh, I'm then going to put beryllium between these, which is, that's 22 flux for each of those cells at the moment. And then I'm going to have a reflector on each one of them with a heavy water moderator. And that brings the flux to a total of 36, then reflected, which is 72, 72 plus 22, 94. So absolutely perfect amount of flux for MOX. Brilliant. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is do the cooling. Um, I've got to think about how much cooling I need here. So I'm going to have my radiators on the end of lines like this for each of these cells. So that's a total of how many lines are each of these cells connected to? That's going to be one, two, three lines. That's three heat multiplier for each one of the cells. So that's 12 times the base heat. 12 times 132 is, what is that? Uh, so 4 times 132 is 2 times 264, which is 528. And then 528 times by 3 is 1,584. So 1,584 heat in total I need to get rid of. So now I need to count it down by placing down my coolers. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place some iron in here. So 1,584, 1,534. 1,484. Well, actually, no, let's just count up. So 1,584 is what we need. And uh, I'm just going to remind myself by going in there and just typing it. Um, so that's 100 so far from the iron. And then the lead is here. So lead, two lead, brings up to 220. 220 and then two arsenic. Arsenic is 135 each. So 220 plus 270 is 490. Inside here, we have a lithium. Uh, which I don't have any of. I need to get some. Lithium. Uh, so, sorry, what was that again? So we've got 220, 490, plus a lithium brings up to 620. 
and 620, then we put glowstone, two glowstone like that. Uh, 620 brings it to 820, uh, plus an obsidian, 890. Then what we'll do is we'll put a glowstone here to bring it to 990. And then manganese, two of them, 990 plus 300, 1290. And then because these moder these moderators are going to be um, f active moderators because they're next to a cell, so 1290, uh, 1390, 1490, um, and then 1560, and then it doesn't matter if it's like not totally within the leniency boundary. One more iron there, and that should bring it to uh, 1560. Oh no, what did I just do it? 1490, 1560. So that should bring it to 1660. 16 and 10, so that will make it undercooled slightly. But that's what we want. We don't want it. The last thing we want is for it to overheat. So I think that should be fine now. Okay, so all those are placed in the right place. And uh, now let's get our uh, heavy water moderator lines uh, down here. And on the end of there, we will put our reflectors, uh, our radiators. Sorry, the radiators go here, here, here. Here. Now, just to mix things up a bit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter these irradiators. So maybe on one of them I'll have bismuth, bismuth, and on one of them maybe I'll have um, thorium. Filter them with thorium. So let's have these two as bismuth and these two as thorium, just for a bit of fun. Cool. And I think that is our design. We can close the rest of this up with glass. Okay, so at the back here, how many ports do we need? We're going to need uh, two ports for the thorium, two ports for the bismuth, and then two ports for the mox. So in total, we're going to need six ports. Uh, I'm actually going to need to get some strong boxes for my um, thorium and, uh, and uh, bismuth because I didn't originally plan to do this, but I just thought on the fly, why not get some filters in there just to show it off a little bit and see how it, see how it works. Um, so bismuth, let's just get one of those, and thorium, let's also get one of those for filtering purposes. Cool, so that's my th mox, uh, there is my bismuth, and there is my thorium. Cool, and these are my filters, so let's place them down. So let's put our radiator ports uh, here, like this maybe. Cool. Again, it doesn't it doesn't matter if it touches or not. They're just ports on the, on the casing, and then let's put our fuel fuel cell ports down down there like that. Okay, so uh, mocks we don't need to filter because we're just going to use unfiltered cells, uh, and then here we're going to use bismuth. Let's use uh, do bismuth up here, and thorium there. So those are now filtered, and you can see that also these are filtered. Never mind. Uh, yeah, they're filters as well. We can check on the inside. Bismuth, bismuth, thorium, and so on. Okay, so let's get our item ducts sorted out. Let's put one there, one there, one there, one there. Strong boxes. This is our thorium, so thorium is this one. Uh, bismuth is this one. And our mox is here. Oops. Then let's get our bins, just to get rid of them again. Usually you'd obviously do stuff with them. Here I'm just getting rid of it. Oops. Cool, and now let's just fill this in with glass. Again, don't have to use glass, but I just am. And then on the top. And this should start running because all my sources are ready to go. And that should activate. And there we go, minus 26 heat. I think that works out. Uh, 1610 minus 1584, yeah, minus 26. So that's all worked out quite nicely. Um, there's obviously a bit of a sparsity penalty, tiny one, 0.5%, just because this is a, a little bit empty in this area here. Um, so it's not quite at that 75% um, useful component level. Um, as you can see, hardly generating any uh, steam at all, just because the efficiency is pretty low and I've only got four cells in there. But hopefully, we should start after a while seeing some thorium and bismuth being uh, thorium bismuth being spit out, um, well their products being spat out. Uh, let's actually put some chests instead of bins just so we can actually see the product uh, coming out uh, rather than just being completely binned. 
Um, now let, we can try and predict how long uh, it's going to take for us to see anything. Um, so if we go on the irradiator recipes, um, each of these lines has got one, two, three heavy, mortar, heavy water moderators, each with 36. That's 108. And we've got two for each of the recipes. So that's 216 flux. So let's go in here. So about 200 flux, roughly. Um, 200, so 160 divided by 200, that's about 0.8. So 0.8 kilonewtons, that's 800 N. Oh, sorry, 800 ticks. So 800 ticks which is, what, 40 seconds? So we should actually see something pretty soon from our thorium. You'd like to think, anyway. I'll have to wait around for a bit, perhaps. Maybe we missed it the first time. We accidentally binned the first one. Um, and by the way, I should mention that by default, irradiators do not produce any heat. So they're okay to just sit there. They can be part of clusters. They can, uh, if they're functional, they can conduct heat and be part of clusters. By default, they do not generate heat themselves, but recipes can be added via craft tweaker to generate heat just to make them a little bit more difficult to deal with. Um, so I'm just wondering when we're going to get this first. Okay, so it turns out there was a little bit of a... Well, I guess it's a bug. Yeah, it is a bug. So it turns out that the irradiators, um, because they're not cells, what, what that means is that they don't actually form their own clusters. Um, they can be part of clusters, but they don't... Uh, they can't serve as a place where the cluster can sort of, uh, as a cluster root. So I've put some conductor blocks here, which are basically just sort of uh, cluster connector blocks, and I've connected them up to these irradiators. And now, when we close this up, if we wait a little while, we should see some thorium. So in the next update, um, what I'll have to do is make sure that clusters, uh, sorry, irradiators don't care about whether they're in clusters or not, because I don't think it should really matter um, unless they're generating heat or maybe they should at least be places where clusters can spawn from um, that will be really easy to add that probably should have been in from the start and in fact i feel like in testing that didn't happen but it doesn't really matter it's what is what it is i'll fix that in testing so just be aware in version 20.23 and earlier irradiators cannot form their own clusters so just put a few conductor blocks uh, to have them hooked up properly and uh, then they should start uh, actually generating their products um, so soon enough now i think we should be getting some uh, some stuff um, just have to be a little bit patient got to wait 80 seconds or so because obviously it hasn't actually been doing anything this whole time there we go so there we go i just saw it go through there Protect didn't even reach thorium dust it just produced some now this uh, this second irradiator the bismuth is a lot longer recipe so that's going to take a much longer time to get produced um, but there we go, that was the irradiator in action there, producing some protactinium enriched thorium dust, and you can then decay hasten that to TBU, put that through another irradiator to get your protactinium to produce uh, uranium-233 directly. So there you go, that is um, a bit of more filtering, but this time with irradiator ports and irradiators. Um, as I said, the uh, conductors having to be connected to the irradiators to form the clusters, uh, that hopefully will be fixed uh, in a later version, um, so don't worry about that too much. Uh, but it works properly and in fact i actually think that maybe this has brought the sparse penalty up yes it has um, because at the moment conductor blocks actually contribute to the um the count which again probably shouldn't be the case i should probably remove that as well uh, it doesn't seem to it doesn't seem right to me that conductors should um it doesn't seem right to me that conductors should contribute to that because you could literally just spam the whole reactor with them so i'll also fix that so there's two bugs i found there that i should fix and I'll get them sorted out in the next version. But there we go, that is basically the idea. Uh, irradiators, they sit on the end of uh, moderator lines. They use flux to process recipes. Um, because cells are sitting on the end of the other moderator line, uh, they increment their heat multiplier, just like they, you know, they're sitting on the end of a reflector line or another cell line. Um, and you've got to make sure that you build your reactors accordingly and your heat sinks accordingly. As I say, I don't have a design for this, but Hopefully you could follow that. It's pretty simple. It's a tiny little reactor, tiny little irradiator, um, but just an example of how they work. So there we go. That's that. Um, that's probably going to be the last video I record tonight, but tomorrow I will come back and record the, uh, the final uh, one of the series that I have planned so far. I've got other videos that I want to get done, maybe more on the solid fuel reactors. I can't think of exactly what I'd focus on. Uh, I want to do the molten salt reactors. I want to show how, how they're doing. Um, there are some extraneous pieces of fission reactor stuff that isn't finished, so I might wait a little bit until showing them off. Um, the molten salt reactors themselves are in a pretty well working state. Um, 
pretty much working and complete. The problem is that the heat exchangers are not back in yet, so you can't actually use the heated coolant for anything yet, but them themselves are working quite nicely. Um, so, oh god, there's a moth flying around, I've got to just wave it away. Um, but there we are, that is, that is irradiators, that is how you get your polonium to produce your better neutron sources, and of course, you can also use californium later down the line to produce the best neutron sources um, when you get there. So in the next video, uh, I'm going to be looking at uh, neutron shields. So neutron shields are um, the way that you stop your reactor from, uh, well, in the, in the end, it's the way that you're going to stop your reactor from uh, processing and shut it down. At the moment, of course, you can just break the, the structure and it stops. Um, but in the future, the only way you're going to be able to actually stop the reactor from running, stop the cells from running, is by using neutron shields. And neutron shields have some interesting heat conducting properties, so when they have neutrons flowing through them, or when they're stopping neutrons flowing through them, blocking the neutrons, they do conduct heat. And that's actually very useful. And I'll just show you a little example of that before we end this video, and uh, just a little teaser of what they could be used for. Um, for example, you could have a fuel cell that usually gets encased in moderators like this. So, for example, in the past, you couldn't have moderators encased in six moderator lines like this. But for example, you could have a shield here that is just acting as a sort of a bystander, and then suddenly heat can be transferred from the cell to the shield, and now via heat sinks, it can be transferred to the outside of the, you know, can, can be transferred to the rest of the, the structure. So that is actually incredibly useful, um, and we'll, we'll get to that and how the shields themselves actually work very very simple it's actually not completely uh, complete yet it's, not, it's a sort of work in progress thing how you um, control the shields but the principle will be the same in the future when it gets a little bit more complicated maybe I'll do another video or part of a video about how it gets more complicated but really it's very it's, it's, it's pretty pretty basic stuff so once again thank you for watching and I'll see you in that next video